Oh my God. In the whole of Africa. Beginning with Nigeria. And his story is about to blow you away. It will last three minutes. Today we are looking at the man Louis Odumegu Ojuku. Whose photograph you can see here. Oh my God. He made money like dirt. Louis Odumegu Ojuku. His son became the leader and president of the secessionist group Biafra. My brother, my sister, today we are talking about Louis Odumegu Ojuku, the richest man Nigeria ever produced. My brother, let us be humble enough to say the very first billionaire Nigeria ever produced. He was born, Louis Philip Odumegu Ojuku, the Queen of England, saw how much he was so much of a businessman. His business acumen was unmatched and decided to knight him with an OBE, Order of the British Empire. So he became knighted and his name changed. Oh, his name had Sir added to it. So he became Sir. Philip Louis Odumegu Ojuku. He was born in the same year Kwame Nkrumah was born, in 1909. My brother, my sister, and he died the same year Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown as president of this nation in 1966. He was a Nigerian businessman and a tycoon. My brother, my sister, born into the Ojuku family of Nwankanwa Quartes, Obiuno. Umuding Newi. Hibokwano! Hibokwano! My God. At a very young age, he was only interested in business. Hey! You know what he did? His father forced him to go to school because he knew that whatever he wanted to become, school must be first. Watch this. He went to primary school at Asaba. And then he went to Hope. Wadal Training Institute, my brother, my sister, and Hope Wadal Training Institute is right there in Nigeria, my brother, my sister. Calabar in the Cross River State of Nigeria. It was founded by the missionaries from the United Presbyterian Church of Scotland in 1895, this school known as Hope Wadal Training Institute. After that, he decided that he was done with schooling. Oh, my God. And he went straight into business. The first business thing he did was to work with the agricultural department of Nigeria at the time. He started his professional career at the agricultural department before leaving to join the John Holt as a sales clerk. And that was where everything blew for the young Louis Odumegu Ojuku. Watch this. He incorporated textiles into his business. He opened a textile company in Onisha. And he supplied the whole of Nigeria with textiles. During that period, he worked with John Holt, a shipping agent. My brother, my sister. Oh, he was into import and export. Watch this. Now, during the Second World War, there was an oil boom in West Africa, especially in Nigeria. He jumped into the oil business and money came in. In the West of President Kufuor, wah, 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 wah. Hey! Hey! He worked with a railway company, shipping oil left, right, and center. Hey! His name was synonymous with oil. My God. And then he opened up the Ojuku Transport. My God. The Ojuku Stores. And the Ojuku textiles all came into play. Money was coming in like magic. Hey! Now with Ojuku transport, it became so popular. Nobody was ready to join any transport if it was, it was not called Ojuku transport in Nigeria and beyond. Hey! He also went into timber. The timber business. My God. He moved from one part of Nigeria to the other. In fact... 
he became Kwame Nkrumah's very good friend. It was him who helped Kwame Nkrumah, my brother, my sister, to do so many different things. At a later date, we'll go into it. But Nkrumah also helped him to open up the first zoo right there in Nigeria. Oh, my God. Interesting. He was so rich. He wanted a zoo for himself. Oh, my God. Watch this. In the 1950s, he diversified his interest and brought in more industries into the area where he dominated right there in Nigeria, Onitsha, Lagos, and so many other such places, my brother, my sister. He worked with the Nigerian Coal Corporation, the Shell Oil, Dachi, and even the African Continental Bank, including the Nigerian National Shipping Line. Hey, everybody wanted to work with Ojuku. He had money. My brother, my sister, he was an active member and a donor to the political party, NCNC. People say no contribution, no chop, but that's not what it means. It's the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons, later changed to the National Convention of Nigerian Citizens. Oh, my God. My brother, my sister, he was appointed head of the NCNC Peace Committee and given the power to choose most of the committee's members. That was how big he was. Mm. He supported Nigeria. He made money, my brother, my sister, to the point that he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II, as you were told. But everything that has a beginning has an end. As his wealth grew, his influence and clout began to extend beyond the industry. He was active in the pre-independence politics of Nigeria and was a donor of the NC. That's the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons, NCNC, a political party which had Namdi Azikiwe, a.k.a. Zix, as one of its members. At the point, he was elected to the House of Representatives, a.k.a. Parliament. But he died in 1966, just a year before the Nigerian Civil War. His son, Chuku Imeka Ika, Odumegu Ojuku, would later become the leader of the secessionist state of Biafra, as you were told. Papa and the Kaikai. Papa Uni Yaminko. Papa. Papa, why be what? Papa Uni Yaminko. Papa. Why a bi? 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 Papa Uni Yaminko. Papa Uni Yaminko. Papa Uni Yaminko. Papa Uni Yaminko. Oh, Papa. Bye bye, you, oh, Papa. Why a bit? Why a bit? Why a bit? Born in 1909 and he passed on in 1966. The great Louis Philip Odumagu Ojuku 